Welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon. Grab your coffee. Make sure it's nice and hot because you do not want to get up during the next few minutes together. Listen, my sisters and brothers, you're going to be really happy that you tuned in for today's program. So I pray you'll spend the entire time listening and joining me as we share a lovely conversation I just had with one of America's leading voices. Her voice speaks and reeks with wisdom and peace, agreement, insight, and most of all, love. It oozes out of her. Her name is Alveda King. And after you uh, share this time with us today, I am sure you are going to respect her and love her even more. So I know you know the name, Dr. Alveda King, but I'd like to tell you a little bit more about this superwoman, this powerful uh, warrior of God. Of course, we all know her as the niece to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but she's also an incredible social activist. She is an author, a singer, a campaigner for civil rights, a cook, a grandma, a nana, an outspoken advocate for the unborn. She has a master's degree in business management from Central Michigan University, go Chippewas, and doctorates from both St. Anselm College and Aiden University. She's a PK, a preacher's daughter, go figure. Her daddy was Reverend A.D. King, and he was the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Inslee, Alabama. That was just a stone's throw away from Birmingham, and that was when that city was the epicenter of the civil rights movement in America. So it's safe to say that she cut her teeth and took her first breath knowing all about Jesus and social justice. Now, she was also elected to the Georgia House of Representatives in 1979, and she maintained a powerful voice. There's that word again for peace, shalom, reconciliation among people of all races and beliefs. She's been a Democrat and a Republican. She doesn't really care much for labels at this stage in life. But, and this quote tells you all you really know, need to know about her. She says, today, I'm just a Christian. Well, and I'm sure you'll see this today as we talk together, this Christian sister has supported many other brothers and sisters in the faith on their path of service and to the American people. She lent her voice to Jesse Jackson in his presidential run and to Herman Cain as he ran for president in 2012. And most recently, Sister Alveda lent her voice to President Donald J. Trump in the 2016 election and later became a member of his advisory group, Black Voices for Trump. Alveda is a minister in her own right, an intercessor and a student and digger and it, of God's precious word. This famous author, Angela Dillard, calls her one of America's most prominent black figures in American Christianity. As you can see, her credits are lengthy, so I won't take the time today just to list them all. I'd rather you come with me and visit with her and listen to her heart. I invite you to bring your spirit to join with ours today. You're in for a huge blessing. So get comfy and open your heart for this precious conversation between sisters together, sharing a very special time. We're gonna go to a quick life hack, and then when we come back, we'll be right with Dr. King. Here we are, brain hacking again. I'm Christy, the soul medic, with Nancy here at Shiloh Farms, and we're so happy you've joined us again today. You, like us, have been hijacked in some ways the last couple of years. There's a lot of fear trying to take over our brains, but we want the love of God, the peace of God to rule in our heart and our minds. So today we're gonna to talk about how to reset your brain. Yes, because what people don't realize is that there is a heart-brain connection. There's a bundle of nerves that transcend from the heart and dump right into the middle of what's called the deep limbic center of our brain. That's the emotional seat. It's, mm -hmm. And that 
surpasses the blood brain barrier there isn't any barrier so whatever you bring in your heart mm -hmm. ends up in our emotional center in this deep limbic system and as we know the soul is our mind will and emotions so when biblically it says guard your heart then there's a reason for that it is our heart receives things as well as it sends it. So we want to watch what we're receiving so that we send the right things into our mind because our mind is this massive CPU that brings in all of the signals from all of our gates and our heart is a gateway. Yes, it is. You know, I know that you want to be emotionally and spiritually healthy. So look at this little line I put here. There's a shift here between remembering who you are in Christ and forgetting who you are. And on this continuum, the way you get to be really healthy emotionally and spiritually is to have Jesus Christ at the very center of your heart. And when he's at the very center, he will help you remember who you are because he designed you and he made you and he wants you to live out of the heart that he gave you. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to bust some of these automatic negative thoughts. And this is really critical. We deal a lot with this with the soul medics that people have actually picked up a bad file and it's stuck in their soul. I call them soul snares. And we want to delete that file and, and, and really download what the Holy Spirit has for us, which is all positive. One of the things that we tell people to do is called gratitude therapy. I'm yes. going to explain that really briefly. It's so easy and it really can be life changing. Every day before you go to sleep or every evening, sit down and write three things you're grateful for every single evening. And you cannot repeat it for an entire month. Even if you had a really bad day, guess what? You, every person in your household made it through that day. Even if your day, you could say, how could this day be any good? But guess what? You are a child of God and you have the right to have another day. So every single day, find three things you're grateful for. Make note of them. And I'm telling you, by the end of it, the end of 30 days, you'll look back and you will feel blessed. Another thing that you can do is because we are all wanting to hear our Father's voice, we want to recognize the voice of Jesus because He said we could. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. So you can lay there in your bed at night and ask the Lord, Lord, what did you see about this day? And what are three things that you like about me? And just begin to practice listening because you'll begin to hear that gentle voice of the Lord reminding you, maybe giving you a picture or a, a, a word, but he's going to speak to your heart and help you know how much he's thrilled with you because he's thrilled with you and he, he doesn't see you negatively. He's only there to encourage us like a, a big brother. Uh, so the Lord can bring warnings, conviction, help. He's got words of life to give us every night as we're going to sleep. It's really a great way to go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for joining us this week on our Brain Hacks. Hi, I'm Jen Mallon with Come Home, and I have the distinct pleasure to be with one of God's favorite. She is a legend. She's creating legacy. She is a voice, an activist, an author, and she brings so much light on topics that are of the utmost importance to the heart of our Father in this season. So Dr. Alveda, thank you so much for saying yes, yes and yes. thank you for your life and everything that you've given. So you are involved in many things, but the thing I love um, so much about you is your heart for intercession and your heart to provide a voice to the voiceless and those that are in the womb and needing representation. And so in light of some of the things that have happened in the last three or four weeks, which are, they're a tremendous victory. Tell us how can we as the body be positioned right now? Because the fight is not over. Jen, the Bible says to desire 
the best gifts, maybe even all of the gifts that you can handle, the blessings that God can give to each of us. And certainly faith, hope, and love would be right at the beginning of our walk with God, learning how to obey God and do those things that God desires for us to do. And so from that position, it's all hands on deck right now. This is 2022. Everything that is in your heart to do to serve the Lord, and that's for everybody. If you have a desire to serve God, and if there's something that you know that you can do, you should do it now for Jesus. And that is across the spectrum. Me, I write books and yes, music. I sing a little bit and <laughs> act a little bit. I have a cooking show. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm a mother and a grandmother. So, well, which one do you really do, Alvita? What are you good at? I'm good at loving Jesus yes. and saying yes. Yes. And so in these particular times, especially in 2022 with the Dobbs case overturning Roe v. Wade, there are people who are very, very frightened, don't know what life should look like. Women, well, what are we going to do now? They're taking away our rights over our bodies. Well, what God has done is bless America bless the family, bless people around the world with an opportunity to correct some problems. Yes. And we will begin to do that if we can love each other, if we can talk to each other, and if we can really shine the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are absolutely right. And that's one thing, too, I love about your ministry is that the the theme I hear come out of you the most is love. So thank you for just being a woman of God that always brings love into her message, no matter how controversial uh, the political scene might be or the yeah. parties or the White House or, or the church. You always bring love. So I'm going to ask you two interesting questions. One, many want to know, are you praying for this administration? And how can we effectively pray for an administration that seems to support things that are not according to our biblical understanding? There is a powerful and beautiful scripture. Pray for those who are in authority yes. that we may live peaceful lives. And so we're not to pray with hate or rancor. Sometimes I will actually pray, especially for this administration. Father, bless them. Change their hearts. Yeah. And if they don't agree as you're working on their hearts, remove them from office, but not from your grace and your love. Yeah. So I do pray that way because some of the things that can happen when people are in office, if they are not serving the... I don't want to even say the Bible or the Lord, but if they're not serving with a heart to bless others, to bless life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, then maybe they need to find something else to do. I agree. Yeah. I think God agrees too. I believe he does. <laughs> I pray he does, really. I do. How did you feel? What went through your heart and your spirit on, on 624? You've worked, yeah. you have mm -hmm. tirelessly labored in this vineyard and for this cause. How did you feel? On 624, the Supreme Court of the United States of America courageously looked at the Constitution of the United States and reversed Roe v. Wade through a case out of Mississippi called the Dobbs case. Now, that didn't mean that women lost their rights over their bodies, and abortion actually has not been abolished in the United States. However, we the people were given an opportunity to re-examine the question of the sanctity of life state by state. So what that did for me, I wanted to shout, cry, <laughs> jump, dance, yell. So I did all of the above. Good. I absolutely did. I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I knew that that was not the end. It was a victory, but we go from victory to victory yes. in the Lord. So I already rolled up my sleeves and said, what next, Lord? What next? That's what I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what did he tell you? Well, just in the quest to, you know, yeah. to pray for America and to yeah. pray for the, that line that just seems to, has been seemingly so successful on keeping us divided. Absolutely. 
I was told to be prepared to counsel, to love, to care, to keep that message of we are one human race, not separate races. And I first say it from the womb to the tomb, and I still say that. And yet beyond the tomb, there is eternity. So to remember that eternal message too. And so that means that the foster care system, for example, in America is not good. It needs to be reexamined. The adoption uh, system of little babies has to be reexamined. Children in school are being taught certain things that would not help them to live a life where they would never need to have an abortion. Those types of things. So just preparing myself to continue to serve, to continue to promote truth. And then that's for everybody. What do you do now when people are scared, frightened, and don't know what to do? We have to shine light and to be problem solvers. Yeah. We have to have solutions. We shouldn't be fear mongers, but faith, hope, and love should be predominant in everything we do now. I agree. You are in a season of life where God is using you in all the spectrums you know, that you spoke about earlier. He's also using you to raise up another generation of warriors and impart um, and speak into their life. So what is one of the greatest lessons that you've learned in your life that you feel compelled to share, impart, teach? I have learned, and I'm 72 years of age now, and people have said, well, your next birthday, your 72nd birthday hasn't come yet, but I was in my mother's womb for nine yes, months, so were. I count that time. And so sometimes at my age, if I want to be tired, or if I, I'll just sit on the porch and pray for people and let the young people do it. I'm reminded that many of the Bible servants were 80 years old before God could even use them. <laughs> And so, but they kept relationships with the young people. Paul and Timothy is a beautiful example. And so keeping relationships generation to generation, remaining relevant, and uh, just be available, to be available. And if we are available and in prayer, when we listen to the will of the Lord and God is guiding us, Proverbs uh, 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God and God will make your path straight. And so I've had to learn that and to know that there's always something that we can do to serve God and humanity as the one blood, one human race from the womb to the tomb into eternity. eternity. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you got to go back and have a conversation like this with the 21-year-old uh, Dr. Alveda, what would you tell her? I would tell 21-year-old Alveda because at that time I was reading the Bible. I wore a cross around my neck. And then I went into some years where I had abortions and willfulness, and I went away from God and came back to God in between 1983-84. I would say to that 21-year-old, build on the foundation that's already in your heart. Don't abandon what you know about God. Do not remove the ancient landmarks. Stay faithful and stay steadfast. Because I did waste a little time, and I had to come back. So I always say, what would I have been if I had remained and continued up? Mm -hmm. Well, I think you've done a really good job of making up for I made, any I lost got back, time. I got back, I got back, I got back, so it's okay. Isn't God faithful he how is. he restores? He does. So you have been an influencer, a warrior for those in the womb. You have um, changed culture. You have been a repair of the breach, you have crossed lines, you have done just epic things because of your obedience. And like you said at the beginning, saying yes. yes. Okay, okay, Lord, if you're crazy enough to ask me, I'm-, I'm I will do it, I'll yes. do it, I love it. Okay, so what's next for you? I like to say that 
I'm going to continue to say yes and be available to God. I do cook on television. People say the cooking show, what does that have to do with the gospel? <laughs> well, we have prayer and good conversation around the table. I produce music. I sing a little bit sometimes now. I'm involved in film. And certainly, as an evangelist, I pray and I use every opportunity to speak of the goodness of God. Yeah. So I'm just going to continue in things of the Lord with creativity, joy, and faith, hope, and love. Amen. You know, God trusts you a lot, and he has thrown you in a shark tank. Mm. And so many of the things you're doing right now, they come with a lot of opposition. Yeah. So how are you graced in that environment? How can you help other people that God's raised them up and they feel like they're the only one in that mountain of influence? It's amazing that you would say that God has thrown me in a shark tank. <laughs> I was with a couple of friends recently, and we were taking a little bit of a working vacation. And one of the vacations, you had an opportunity to ride in a canal in a boat. And I said, oh, are there sharks in the water? Are they going to eat me? Are the sharks going to eat me? And they said, Alvita, are you serious? I said, well, they're real sharks. They're real sharks. And so we all laughed because I was looking for the sharks in this artificial tank. And then a few days later, I turned on the television, and sharks have invaded and are up on the shore in New York. That's really true. And so I called them. I said, see, I told you the sharks would... <laughs> I had a prophetic word, you know, right? <laughs> so we laughed about it. But we deal with snakes and scorpions and the sharks and the enemy. But Jesus has given us authority yes. to tread on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. We use that power of overcoming evil with good, not with vengeance, because vengeance belongs to the Lord. the Lord. And because of that, I have to be remindful and uh, when I get upset, and sometimes I do, if things don't go well, and everybody will say, oh, you're mad at me. I say, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm tired of the devil. You're not the devil. <laughs> and so we have to be aware of Satan's tactics, but to still keep the joy of the Lord, overcome evil with good. And as we do that, and we're mindful to do that, we'll continue in the things of the Lord. I think about Queen Esther, who obeyed yeah. her cousin Mordecai. And she was used to deliver a nation. Mary Magdalene, be it unto me according to your word. Believe it or not, the humility of the queen of Sheba. Yeah. She had everything. She had the world. And yet she went to Solomon and said, I came to prove. I want to know about this wisdom that you have. So she humbled herself. So we can think as women and then all of the heroes of the Bible, whether they were men or women, they were imperfect people. And, you know, I even think about my own family. Martin Luther King Jr. was not perfect. Daddy King was not perfect. My dad, A.D. King. <laughs> they weren't perfect. They served a perfect God. Yeah. They were servers, and they were givers, and yes. they had the heart of God, and, and so do you. And just on behalf of myself and other women warriors, um, that know that there is a fight we're assigned to. Thank you uh, for leading the way and just you. for your faith. And just as we close this precious time, do you mind just praying over those that are watching, those that are needing hope, those that know that they're called to solve a problem, cure an ill, be a voice for a cause, and they just aren't sure how? Do you mind just releasing faith and praying over them as we close today? I would love to do that. You know, I'm also known to break into song. So do I'm do <laughs> just a little bit on here to tenderize our hearts. Yes. In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Jesus, you are a solid rock. Father God, you love us. Holy Spirit, you are our comforter and teacher. Touch every heart right now, God and show yourself strong. We love you. 
We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, precious woman of God. I'm so excited. You're at the very beginning of what God has for you to do. Thank you. Thank you for this time. Thanks, Jen. Okay. Well, I love that she broke out in song. That's one of my favorite things. You know, my grandmother used to say, pretty is as pretty does. And her actions, her heart, her love for the Lord is so pretty. And that came out. It will definitely go down in history as one of my favorite interviews. What an honor that the Lord allowed me to do it. Remember when she said she's neither Republican or Democrat, she's just a Christian, just a Christian indeed, as if there's any such thing, right? Well, as you saw and heard, Alveda King's journey has taken her so many places and has seen her to be involved in so many efforts to bring the Holy Spirit into so many situations with so many people from so many walks of life. What they all had in common has been they're all children of God. Alveda has said about the people she served and worked with, none of them were perfect, but they served a perfect God. And here's something else that she said that I dearly love and agree with. I pray that all polar opposites learn agape love and live together as brothers and sisters or perish as fools. Isn't that something that we should all learn agape love, unconditional love, and how to live together at peace with all men as far as we can do? But what I hope you heard the loudest is her call out to all of us to bring everything, all of our blessings, talents, and gifts, our callings that God has invested in us to get up and serve him now. Let me remind you of what she said. It's all hands on deck right now. It's 2022. And if you have a heart to serve God, bring everything you have. If you have a desire to serve God and you know you have something you can do, you need to do it, friend. Dear sisters and brothers, that's a word for all of us right now. Alveda King Ministries today is one of the loudest voices bringing prayer and intercession by the body of Christ. She uses her voice to speak out about important things that need a voice like hers. Critical race theory, crime in our cities, landmark Supreme Court decisions, overturning Roe versus Wade, and much, much more. What an honor, what a joy. I look forward to interviewing her in the future. Thank you for being a part today. Come home, and I'm Jen Mallon.